Greetings! I'm currently speaking through a mask. And that's why I'm speaking like this. Let me know if you like it or not. But unfortunately, I'd only find out once this video goes up, so I suppose that piece of advice was quite redundant. Ooh. All right, I'll stop. So, uh, I've been changing up the style recently. I just want to take you through my old shit. I used to be a big fan of thick outlines. Thick and thinner lines for smaller details. I've been doing this a while, I've been doing this for like uh, for a couple years, a year, I don't know. I had this style primarily because I'm used to flash. I'm a big fan of thick lines that taper off at the ends. It's just a very nice aesthetic, you know, thick, ooh, taper. I love the taper. I've been doing this for a while, you know, whether I'm doing flash or using paint to the side, or even Photoshop, I just like this style. And I think it's also inspired by Yendi Tarkovsky and uh, the art of Batman Brave the Bolt. I love that show. It made Batman fun again. Batman fun for kids? Wow. It's such a great style. And I can tell you right now, for this shit, I spent way too long with the line art. Because I wanted to get it just right. And you know, just right is up to interpretation, so hmm, maybe I didn't even get it this right. Who knows? I like it. Yep, I uh, got stuff like that. All right, so this is a different style. You can see that uh, very thin lines, they're all even. There's no tapering whatsoever. This one was inspired by Radzikrish, Radzikrish, the guy the guy who did Kipo, basically. And I like how he always had like white backgrounds and bloom spreading out around the characters. I just love that. And uh, I spent way too long on this one. I think I took like a couple of months. But I was happy with the result. Line art took forever. Especially this shit. But it was fun. I do like this style. But I've been uh, exploring other ways to do stuff. I think I used that method to paint my backgrounds here too. I mainly wanted to do this uh, Captain Marvel series because I wanted to practice doing backgrounds. When I used backgrounds, I really found the textures to be helpful and the freedom you can use, you know? With uh, the, the figure, I always have to keep my shadows really nice and clean and strictly define the light source. But the background, I can just do whatever. And uh, you run the risk of making the colors all muddy, but there's a lot more freedom in what you can do. Like, I can change the gradient of this without having to go to another layer. Then with the sliders, I can just, I want this more dark blue paint it on and then mix it and then everything kind of blends together if you start off with blue and then use a semi opacity brush because there's always a little bit of that blue just seeping out so everything's uh, cohesive let me show you some of my recent stuff so as you can see from my instagram for a while i've been doing uh i think the last one i did in this style is this i gotta be honest i'm not a big fan of this one it doesn't look as polished as my other ones I think I was rushing this one. I didn't really put much thought in the shadows because I just blurred the fuck out of everything. And now this one I spent a long time because I was uh, I was studying this one by Angel Ganev. Angel Ganev? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Angel's coloring is really good. I think I did color the lines a little bit, but yeah, I've just been trying to experiment. And then I did stuff like this. And I like how the uh, texture of the lines helped. This was done in Photoshop, but to go all the way down here, to go down here, I've done the uh, six fan arts in this style. And I liked it because it was really fast. I didn't really have to think so much, and I decided on the colors I wanted to use beforehand. This way, you know, I don't spend so much time thinking and messing around with the sliders like I would with some of these other pieces, where I have every color on a different layer, and then I'm very meticulous about what shade, what hue, or what warmth I wanted to be. This one I just decided beforehand, just paint it directly. It's a lot more freeing and a lot faster to do. Sometimes that doesn't always work like I did this one. I'm not too proud of. I think uh, it could be a lot better, but I just wanted to get this out because I, I just watched the movie. I don't know, something about this one I'm just not too big a fan of. Maybe it's the colors I used. It didn't really convey the warmth. Ah. 
this one I had a lot of time to work on because it was a month challenge. This one's kind of a hybrid. You got the uh, fuzzy static shading from the to the side, and you got the tapering thick lines with the uh, thinner lines. So I did stuff like that. Yeah, this one. This one was like the first one I tried with the fuzzy static brush inside. I really like it. So I've been doing this style a little bit more. See that? It's got that nice, clean, but still a little bit messy. Like if you zoom in, you can see a lot of texture going on. It just reminds me of like being a kid and drawing with crayons. It's got that nice feeling. Maybe that's why people like sketches more. Like if you look at this, I, I kind of don't like this. And I think the sketch actually looks a lot better. Now this was the original sketch. And you can see all these uh, textures and imperfections. I like this a lot more than this. So I might just have to redo it. You know, maybe uh, spruce up the lines a little bit, make uh, a couple more textures. Same thing with the uh, guy. I like this a lot more than this. I don't know why. I just feel like this guy's got more of a story than this one. This one's too clean. <laughs> but yeah, line of style has been really cool. Here's a fun fact. I made a boo-boo while painting this. So you see this? This wasn't my first attempt. What happened was I had actions and one of the actions, I've deleted it already, but it was Control F12 instead of Shift F12, which I used to flip. See? Flipping is good to check your proportions. And unfortunately, Control F12 meant I would crop and save, and the crop did have this ticked on. And then I saved and then closed, and then when I opened it again, it was like that, and the history was completely empty. So I had to do everything again. And you can see there's subtle differences, like the red's a little bit more desaturated, the green's a little bit more yellowish, but oh yeah, that the under hat or the eyes are a little bit more purplish, but you know, I'd say this is pretty good. I think in this one, the cheekbones were kind of flatter, which was something I only discovered when doing the palette. It gave Jiro like this Samurai Jack face. But I really like that he has cheekbones. That's how I initially drew him. Yeah. So I guess it's alright. So what I do is uh, we need one layer for the hair, one layer for the face, one layer for the neck, and then uh, layers for the eyes, for the eyelashes, for the eyebrows, for the nose, for the mouth, for the ear colorings. Maybe two layers for the white, because there's a behind part here. There's an in front part here. Then one layer for the heart, one layer for the uh, anchor. And then I can just go in with uh, preserve opacity and color it. And it's really fun to be able to color in the lines. You know, when you're a kid, you're struggling with such a big issue, and then now I can just, poof, I don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like how I do in Flash. So in Flash, coloring is really easy. All I have to do is just make sure my lines are closed and uh, close all gaps is on. I'm done. That's all you gotta do. Well, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Thanks for watching. Sorry the audio isn't quite up to snuff as usual. I accidentally left the fan on. And I can't be asked to turn it off and re-record. But I hope you got some value out of this video. I hope it entertained you. I didn't see a good place where I could put all these uh, time-lapse videos. So here they are. At the end, better late than never. So enjoy this copyright-free music, and I'll see you next time!